What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with the top solo Warframes that you want to have in your arsenal. Now if you've not seen my top 10 must have Warframes that you need to have in your arsenals, do go check that out. Now this top solo Warframes list isn't focused on just what Warframe that you can play solo because you can just use any frame and play solo, it really doesn't matter. I'm mainly going to target four different aspects of your Warframe gameplay, where specific Warframes are going to be way better than others, while also giving you some options so you can, you know, have a little flex slot. So if you say, oh, but I like using this Warframe solo, then use it! Enjoy what you like, but these Warframes offer you different approaches and of course are very efficient in what they do now what are these four aspects or categories in your warframe gameplay you're gonna have farming boss hunting leveling and your cruising i'll explain cruising in a bit starting off with farming what exactly do you mean by farm well it's the type of warframe that you use to farm resources it's not farming relics or anything like that no it's used to farm resources i'm talking about frames that give you bonus loot boss hunting meaning idolon hunting and profit taker but when you're looking at the 60 eyes boss it's not similar to killing the profit taker or idolon hunts in that case you have to think completely different and mod completely different because that boss will get rid of all your buffs and abilities at the end of the day you just want to have a frame that can survive and have strong weapons and when it comes to the leveling aspects, I'm talking about leveling up Warframes and leveling up your weapons. Now, when it comes to leveling up Warframes, you don't necessarily have to use a specific Warframe because you're leveling yourself solo. That will come down to a helmet ability. But when you're focusing on leveling weapons, then yes, specific Warframes along with their abilities will help you on even more. And then cruising. This is a bit of a broad subject. Cruising will factor in playing different missions that just have a mixed bag. Frames that will help you destroy steel path while also having a lot of utility. And these are the same warframes that you can use with or without helmet abilities to help you improve on your gameplay. If you enjoyed what I'll show here today and I don't have a detailed guide for it, please do comment down below if you want to see a detailed guide for that specific thing. I know a lot of people will be asking for the profit taker one, which I do plan to do. So without further ado, let's start off with the farming. Here we are when it comes to resource farming. And of course, the best Warframe to do this is Korra herself. We'll start off with Korra and her fourth ability with the Augment. The Augment gives you a 65% drop chance. This 65% will affect every enemy that is captured within the strangle dome. And you can have two instances of these strangle domes. So as long as enemies are captured, you kill them, they get a 65% bonus drop chance. Then you come to Necros. This gives you a 54% drop chance. And this is with everything in range, but it has a desecration rate. For those who don't understand what this means, when you kill enemies while this ability is active, you have a two second delay before you can start desecrating enemies. And then you'll start to desecrate three enemies per second after that delay. And when you compare this to Korra's Pilfering Strangle Dome, enemies just have to be captured in the dome. And she can have two instances of that dome without any delay. So as long as enemies are in there, you whip, they die, you get loot. But then another thing about this ability, it prioritizes health orbs a lot more. So as soon as you kill, you have to wait for that delay. When you hear that sound effect, that's when you know that Necros has been desecrating enemies. You see how long that took? Way too long. Ever since Hydra Guy reworked, his tentacle swarm is just so much better when it comes to bonus loot. The only problem with this is that it's not really great at positioning. So you'd have to build it in a certain way to reduce the range, but also have enough range to grab enemies. And you'll have to camp yourself in a little hole. Now, all these frames are really great, but they all have pros and cons to their loot playstyle. Korra needs her strangle dome with the augment, but she has a lot of damage. She can survive pretty well. She can crowd control enemies very well, and she can deal crazy amounts of damage. But the only con is that she has to use her strangle domes and wait for enemies to be captured in the strangle dome. 
but because you already build Korra for a lot of range, you can place these strangle domes in various spots on the map or even some choke points, which can be very helpful for your looting experience. Necros has pros to his looting. He has a bit more movement and he can use whatever weapons he wants. The downside is that the desecration rate is just god awful. There's so much delay. However, Necros has innate loot drop chance with his desecrate, but he has to use an augment so it doesn't drain his energy because the desecration rate can go pretty high if you kill a lot of enemies. And then Hydroid has the issue where his tentacles are just very erratic and can be displaced all over the map. So you'd have to build accordingly to reduce that range and have enemies come towards you. So that means Hydroid has to sacrifice a Smita Kavan just so he can have some grouping. So if you're farming with Necros or Korra, this is usually what you would mod for. And depending how large your Warframe shields are, you can switch between calculated redirection or link redirections. And notice the difference. If I put calculated, I lose some shields, but link, I gain a bit of shields because my Korra has bit more shields. That's about it. The main thing you want to have is, of course, charm. A charm helps you get that bonus loot when it triggers. Reinforce bond if you have a Warframe with a lot of shields. And you can also get these shields by just reloading, which is very nice. Pack leader, you're going to be regenerating so many overshields. Tenacious bond gives you crit damage on all of your weapons. A bite allows you to use Tenacious Bond a lot easier, especially on Kavats. And Tech Assault just gives you a little bit of, you know, survivability on your cat. But the other cool thing is, Korra can also have a companion. Unfortunately, you will not get two instances of these. So if you're using Korra, you can switch these two out or switch out your Smita Kavat build. Up to you. So for the Korra build, I'm using Lycut's Hunt to give me bonus health orbs when I kill enemies with melee. Her whip claw is a melee. And my primer is, of course, the epitaph. Modded for viral and heat. Shoot, shoot, shoot. You apply status effects. This allows you to refresh the cooldown for Lycut's Hunt. Very nice. So you can have this up 100% of the time without ever recasting this ability. Also, make sure to have Dexterity Arcanes on both of your weapons so you can have some combo duration i'm also using the naramon focus school but you can, of course you can use whatever focus school you want just because of the power spike node this allows your combo counter to not fully deplete but decay over time and of course the best stat stake for Korra is the magistar not sancti or anything just the magistar incarnate because you get that juicy 16 crit chance and one times critical damage multiplier which applies before mods taking Korra's base crit damage from two to three which is a massive boon to your damage the magistar incarnate is modded for radiation because we have melee exposure so we have radiation and melee exposure usually you would do this if you're running nourish but you can still work with this and of course i am using the purple shards to increase my critical damage even further and the build is focused on having a lot of range don't worry about efficiency because we have like its hunt arcane fury for more base damage efficiency multi efficiency to upkeep your duration accumulating whip claw and pilfering strangle dome everything else is just for survivability and range and to give me more energy but if you feel like you need a bit more shield regen you can always swap your aura from cross projection to brief respite and of course use two auger mods on your secondary so right here, for example, you got Augur Seeker and Augur Pact. Both of these will help you regenerate your shields paired with Brief Respite. All these enemies that you kill will give you bonus loot. And the best part about your Strangle Dome is that it's an aggro tool. So enemies captured in the dome will work like a radiation prop towards the other enemies outside. Having Corrosive and Radiation will allow me to deal bonus damage to the two armor types. Alloy, which is Radiation, and Ferrite. Corrosive. We just got some Argon Crystals. I don't have a resource booster, so don't worry about that. And there you go. Argon Crystal again. So yeah, this is another Argon Crystal. This is, this is pretty good. So if I had a resource booster, I would have a lot more Argon Crystals right now. All right, here we are when it comes to leveling. Now, we're not leveling a Warframe, but we're leveling weapons, for example. And we're looking at Banshee. 
Why Banshee? Well, because of her silence. Her silence easily allows you to level up Warframes and weapons. This ability will stun enemies and have them susceptible to stealth multipliers. And if you kill enemies that are not aware of you, you get the stealth affinity multiplier, which is another boost to your affinity gain. What you can do is also use the augment savage silence, which increases that window before enemies actually notice you. And to increase that window even more, I'm using Gloom to slow down enemies. So their reaction time is greatly decreased. And yes, you can do this with Sebagoth himself by subsuming silence onto him. So yeah, I highly recommend if you go to the shop, buy your affinity booster. You can buy the three day one, whichever one you want, as long as you have an affinity booster. But then of course you can take that to next level with your relay booster and charm. Now, what makes Banshee so good at leveling weapons? For one is that her passive will mute all your weapons. Basically a free silencer for all your guns. So that means you don't have to mod for any silencer mods on your weapons. This is like a basic build that I'll take to leveling. But looking at the build real quick, enemy radar just to see that massive enemy ping on your mini map, even better. Duration, strength, and you don't want range. You want to have base range with your silence. This will give you 20 meters. Most important thing is that you want duration. Duration is very good for silence. This lasts for 38 seconds. And you have two places that you want to go when it comes to XP. You either go to Sedna and Adaro, or you want to go to Saturn and Telesto. Both of these are exterminate missions, and they have Grenier. Grenier offer you even more experience. And because I have preparation on my build, I immediately start with energy. Cast your gloom, cast your silence, make sure you have your overlay map on, and go out and kill enemies. All right, notice that 500 affinity gain, that gives you the bonus experience. Thanks to silence, gloom, and the savage silence augment. Unfortunately, I did not have an affinity booster, so this would, of course, be a lot faster. You want to avoid the line of sight of, of the Larveling because they have a larger aggro radius than all the other enemies. You see? They saw me. And you see how the icons of the enemies change from a hollowed out red triangle to a fill triangle. That means they are alerted. So we lose that 500% bonus. That's the downside if you have a shitty tile set like this. Because these guys have a massive aggro range. Alright, you see how the enemies, the triangles, have a hollowed out triangle? That means they are unalerted. And we can go back to leveling. So yeah, rank 26 without any affinity booster. So just imagine, if you had an affinity booster, you would have finished this mission long ago. So this is why I say get an affinity booster. So the best part about this is that I was recording... And knights just happen to be around. And there is still that bug where lures can't get crits. Which DE needs to fix. Radial suck. Kill all these enemies. Alright. There we go. That was not so bad. And we got a free lure right there. Let's lose some energy. Wait for that left leg. Boom, boom. And we go pick up our second lure. Can I not get staggered? And we pick up our third lure. Lose some energy there. Oh my god, auto melee. Very shit mechanic. Please fix it, DE. We're gonna drag these yellow lures here. Put that there. Drop our little crewmate. And we hear some bombs. Activate Matarai. Get rid of that limb, and that crewmate is gonna shoot the Adelon and help charge these two lures right here. Let's go pick up this energy here, put it into that lure, and we get 
Let me activate Eclipse because pain. All right, that is three. We're going to get two more here. And it's getting up. And all these lures are charged. Put our shield, do a dodge roll, and shoot our Verma Splicer. Get in your Arc Wing, go to the shrine. Energy, shield, look down, pick it up. Caster one, caster eclipse, go here. Radio suck, that lore is bugged. All right, wait for it till it glows. Put in your shard. Please, no long spawn. Thank you. Ah. I don't know why I casted another shield when I had a shield on me. It's been a while, okay? It's 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 been like what? Five months since I last hunted. Give me a break. Watch the left leg. Shoot. There you go. I'll say put one shield facing forward, one shield up, so it'll give you more room if you're not good at aiming. And now we have Matter active. Let's make sure we armor strip. We put a shield, debuff the Eidolon with your contamination wave. Make sure you have full energy. Activate Matter Eye. And of course, hitboxes are so bad, and I didn't have enough crit, unfortunately, to one-tap that limb. Sad. Debuff, debuff, debuff. Okay, and this is the final limb. If you want to know more about island hunting, I do have an entire guide series to help you out when it comes to hunting. And boom, boom. Oh my god. Hitboxes. Please, game. Hitboxes. All right, now we have three spots where we can spawn some bombs so over there. Over there and over here. But we got Voms right here. So we can fly here. Radio suck. Okay. And over there. We can get some Voms there. We can get some Voms here. Unfortunately, we didn't get any spawns. Because we're unlucky. Oh. Now we go back. We have to go back real quick. We're going to get some Voms underneath. There we go. Wow, this is so bad. <laughs> and I watered myself. And they did not teleport. Nice game. At least we have one lure charge. That's the important thing. You want to have one lure charge. Okay. Perfect. So, since I have my shield, activate. There you go. But we have auto melee because it's so annoying. Fix this, Steve, please. That's great. Make sure you have some energy also to remain in void mode, of course. One, two. There you go. And now that we also have our VS, now that we also have Void Strike, this debuff. Make sure full energy. Can we one tap this? Nope. More shields would have been a lot stronger, but it's okay. 
debuff debuff make sure you're drain yourself of energy all right last friggin limb right there and let's bring these here Oh my god. Problems with hitboxes. Since this was my first charge lore, this is my loot lore. Oh my god, can I please pick up my lures and not get staggered? Usually you would fly around and look for bombs and charge them, but I was... Kept on getting staggered. I couldn't even pick up my lures. Because our wings are trash. We fly. Stop here. Drop your necromech. Because that's all it's used for. To hold the door open. Park your loot. Radio suck. You see how you've sucked everything? And you just fly in. You don't have to wait for the door to open. We got a grace. But yeah, there you go. All right, so that was Eidolon hunting. I know that was a lot for you to see. And I'm sorry, I was also trying to remember things. It's been a hot minute since I did a solo hunt. Volt is your go-to when it comes to Eidolon hunting. You don't need a Necromech. And for the love of God, you don't need a Zenith unless you have a specific Riven and you're speedrunning. So your usual build will be a Rubico. When it comes to farming Profit Taker, Volt is of course the meta Warframe. He is the fastest and he's better at it. And when it comes to the meta primary for Profit Taker is Kuva Ogris. That is for speedrunning strats. However, if you do have the Zenith, this is also another bonus because the alternate fire gives you that punch through. So you can stay in one spawn and shoot the pylons without even moving. And of course, the main reason we're using Chroma is because of his effigy. This is only if you're farming credits. Otherwise, you want to go speed, you want to go fast, Volt is the way to go. But for every other player, Chroma is going to be the one to be used for Profit Taker. That's his only useful thing in Profit Taker. And we're replacing Vex Armor with Eclipse. Yes, Eclipse got changed, but it's still a better boost than running Vex Armor. Because it's instant, you don't need to take damage, and you already have a damage multiplier. Looking at the builds, I do have Primary Dexterity, because I'll be using my melee to get base damage and I'll explain how. Dexterity, and you're going to mod the primary for Magnetic Toxin, because Toxin is going to be annoying if you don't have it. The secondary is my Detron. It is bonus magnetic, so it's another good bonus out there. And it's modded for Viral and Heat. All I have to do is pull it out, alternate fire, dump the magazine, holster it, and it will reload thanks to Eject Magazine. And again, Dexterity. Moving on to the melee weapon. This is where it gets interesting. I have Exodia Contagion. This throws out a projectile that deals IPS and Viral along with Blast. That already covers a lot. And then I have Melee Exposure, which will give me Corrosive modded onto my weapon. And I have the Melee modded for Gas, Radiation, and Electric. So this already covers a lot of elements. So the main rotation is throwing your Contagion and shooting your Zenith. And if Viral or Heat pops up, you swap to this, dump, swap back and of course you're going to be running the smita kavat yet again to get credits when it comes to your vehicles itzel is the best arcwing this is all you ever need for the builds for any arcwing build because all the other arcwings are useless except itzel well arcwings in general are useless now void rig here is actually going to be quite helpful because you can mount this pretty quickly instead of deploying your arc gun because that takes 20 years why? But yeah, of course, the best weapon is the Velocitus. They recently fixed it because it was kind of buggy. But if you do not want to go for the Velocitus, go for the Mall Salon, go for the Imperative Vandal, and modded for crits, Radiation. I did have Venom Clip here. This is because I didn't have Toxin before. Of course, you saw the build. I didn't have Cold there. And the Prophet Taker will be switching between a lot of elements. It's just fine. So we talked to this NPC, little duck. We're going to wait for this annoying dialogue that we can't... Avoid. I am using Matter Eye, so I'll perform two Void Slings when I go outside and snapshot that into my Eclipse. So, two Void Slings, Eclipse, get in Arc Wing, and as soon as we land at the Prophet Taker, I will use my alternate fire for the Zenith. 
Another good thing is that Volt has speed, so flying here is a lot faster. Notice how it has impact on its head. Alternate fire. I'll throw my Contagion and shoot my Zenith. So we have cold. I don't have cold on my weapons. I use my weapons. I sorry, I use my operator. And boom. It has viral swap. Blow my load. There you go. Now you see how it's vulnerable. All the limbs are vulnerable. I deploy my arc gun. You can use your gear wheel, whatever. Since we have Eclipse, you deal a lot of damage. All right, get rid of our arc wing. Keep killing enemies, and it's going to deploy its pylons. And since I have Zenith with its punch through, I can shoot these from a distance. See how far it is? Boom. Kill that one. Kill that one. And kill that one. I can't summon my arc gun right now, but I can use my Necromech. Get into this Necromech. The damage is going to be slightly lower, which is just fine. You're not speed running here. Kill it. Kill all limbs. It's going to be vulnerable. Get rid of its head. And now it has corrosive. I deploy my arc gun again. We do a lot of damage because we have Eclipse. And now it's going to deploy its pylons again. Shoot all the pylons with the Zenith. But if you don't have the Zenith, you would have to physically fly there and hit every single pylon. All right. Alternate fire there. Contagion. And now it's vulnerable again. Now I can deploy my art gun. And kill the limbs. All right, we're going to stand right behind this big ass thing. And it's going to do a little twerk. Watch the butthole. Press my fourth ability. And it's going to drop its credits. Boom. You pick up credits. And that's it. That's how you farm credits. I have 250,000 from the drop. I didn't. I don't have a credit booster, nor did I get a cat buff. So... I only get 250. And the cool thing is, you get some Tauroids, you get mods, all that good stuff. All right, here we are in the final category, cruising. Meaning just, just clearing the star charts, your steel path, doing whatever. Just having a Warframe that can deal a lot of damage, but also provide you and your team with some utility. One of my favorites that I recommend to a lot of players is Protea. Her grenade fan provides you and your allies shields, overshields, and shield regen. And she can give anybody on the team universal ammo drops, meaning this also replenishes arc gun ammo. So really nice to have when you're leveling up your arc gun. Of course, you have energy and health orbs. This is an amazing DPS weapon. Her fourth ability, it's hit or miss with a lot of players. But if you want a detailed Protea guide, do go check out my Green Shard Protea. We're going to be blasting through these pretty quickly because we have a lot of frames to recommend. Another one is Wisp. Very good to have on your team and you will never complain if you have this Warframe because she provides Reservoirs. Reservoirs is insanely powerful because it gives you movement speed, fire rate, and attack speed. This is the only fire rate increase buff currently that you can give to allies. Will-O-Wisp, great utility for survivability, teleportation, and spreading your effects. Thanks to Breach Surge, you blind enemies, you can crowd control Xmas units, which is friggin' huge. Her fourth ability is Doodoo Water, you never use it, it's useless, and you replace it with anything else. Nourish, Roar, Eclipse, it doesn't matter. Very nice to have on the team. Revenant is also another great choice, perfect for anybody who doesn't know how to survive, because this guy makes it easy for anyone with below room temperature IQ to be able to survive. This with his Mesmer skin. Activate this you're unkillable. And it has an augment where you can share this buff to allies. Reeve can one-tap enemies if they're enthralled. And with enthrall, you can control enemies, turn them into your... And the best part, having these slaves around gives you base damage with its thrall packed augment. So he has pretty good augments. Not his third ability augment. It's doo, doo water. His fourth ability, again, not that impressive. Kind of a waste of a time. So just like Wisp, use anything else. Roar, Zanta, whatever. You get the gist. Nourish is quite popular. 
That's what I heard. And another great pick if you love farming relics, especially low level relics, meaning not steel path. Titania is very good to have. You equip Thermal Sunder and you're good to go. If you want to know more, I do have a detailed Titania build video. You can check that out as well. And another frame that is perfect for solo content that I enjoyed using a lot is Gauss. Activating his red line gives you attack speed, reload speed, uh, fire rate, casting speed. The only Warframe to give himself casting speed. Very huge. And it does some AoE damage. Activating this ability greatly improves the potency of his other abilities. And he's all about moving fast, zipping around everywhere. Perfect for any player who likes to be fast and using weapons. So if you're looking for any Warframe to destroy Steel Path, I highly recommend to check out my top 10 Warframes. Anyway, folks, if you liked what you saw here and you want a more detailed guide on specific things that you did see here, please do comment down below. If you did enjoy and learn something from this video, please feel free to leave a like share and subscribe for more warframe content streams and so much more do refer to the description thanks for watching and as always a peace bye bye now